We are officially entering Arusha National Park. As we pass the sign 1959, back since those days, this area was an important area for wildlife. That's why they started an animal century down there. Because the part that we see today with human settlement before we entered this park, it was the national park. Anyway, by that time, it was not known as a national park, it was a farming land for the British. And because they use it for farming, all animals, those come out of the park, they will be pushed back to the to the to the area that they don't want to use. And if they don't follow what they want them to do, some of them get to be useful in terms of food. So during the British government, the hunting was allowed. During the first government of Tanganyika to the fourth government of Tanzania, hunting was allowed. And uh, that way people used to hunt the animals. So those who were injured, or like by shooting them, they didn't get properly shot. They will go to that animal farm, I mean the sanctuary here. That animal sanctuary where they get to be treated and kept in the sanctuary. Today it's facing out. Arusha National Park, its size is 545 square kilometers. But it started with only 200 square kilometers. So we have managed to expand it to the size, the good size. During the German colonial government, the northern part of uh, Arusha National Park, they used to have cattle farm for dairy products. Today, the cattle farm is gone. Today, the cattle farm is the park. I will point it out. Have you ever heard the film known as Atari by John Wayne? You watched the Atari film? Where John Wayne used to hunt or chop the animals by using uh, a rope and like uh, rhinos. He hunted a lot of rhinos, buffaloes. I, I cannot tell for what reason. That's it. No, no, you can, you can give it back to it later. So, um, I don't know what was the purpose of him hunting rhinos. Uh, where to, I don't. But if you watch that movie, you can really tell he was hunting a lot of animals. Zebras. And he kept the cheetah as a pet. So he was lucky in those days. Today, that's not possible because all of this is used as a national park. We have a lot of animals that are in this park. But very unique, we have colobus monkeys. They are very shy, very, very shy. They're wearing white jacket and the black, uh, no, black, white jacket and the black t-shirt. The babies are born totally white. As they grow older, the color will change. The male are slightly smaller than the, I mean, bigger than the female. The female are slightly smaller. They have no thumb. All the primates, including us, we have got a thumb. But all the three types of colobus we have, when you in Zanzibar, in, around Jozani, you can see the, the red back uh, colobus. They have no thumb because when they jump from one branch of a tree, it, this will hurt them a lot. And they have been adopted and lost the thumb. So they have, their hands have got only four fingers. They have one that before? Yes. So, Hopefully, I'm not giving you any guarantee of animals here. Hopefully, we will see. Although, uh, anyway, there are already zebras. Zebras. And uh, in the background, you see black dots in the grass. Those are the water hogs. What? Oh, um, and there's uh, a... Simamo too? Um, let's go a little bit up, up high, you'll see it better. The warthogs, zip. You, do you call it zebras or zebras? Zebras. Okay, we call it zebras. Zebras. Okay. 
So let let us not uh, be confused. If I say zebra or zebra, I'm talking of the same same thing. Um, they do graze in the forest, and it's a very dense forest as you can see. So when it comes to the time of relaxation, they will come out and relax here. Because it's a flat, open land, we call it small Serengeti, mini, mini Serengeti. In this area, animals will easily relax without fear because they can see far in a distance. Mm -hmm. When they are in the forest, the bushes, the trees will limit their vision. The trees will be in their way and then the predators can easily attack them. But here they can relax and as you can see they are very wise. Lots of buffaloes are laying down but few are there to watch. They are standing up. And the reason they are taking guard, they are taking can I take photo of you? Mm -hmm. They are taking guard of the rest of the of the herd. The group of buffalo we call it herd of buffaloes. That's the one doesn't change the name. The others can change the name. And I have just recently learned something new. Um, I will tell you when we come across those animals. Um, the world, I mean, the, the warthogs are here enjoying that fresh, juicy grass, which they can dig it out by using their lips. They are kneeling down, as you can see, most of them are kneeling down with the four legs to facilitate the disc and the lips. If you have seen the pig's lips around with a very fine, soft layer, like a glass layer, that helps them to detect the quality of food. That's why, if you have ever seen the pigs eating, you bring the pigs feed in a container, you pour it, from the top to the bottom is the same. Top to the bottom is the same, but the pig will easily, quickly dig down to the bottom because it's using the disc to determine the quality of food. We start from the bottom and start coming up. So kneeling down, that is comfortable feeding, which help, help them to detect the quality of food. Mostly they eat from the roots because roots has got a lot of minerals. So uh, that's the reason why you see they are kneeling down. We have birds like the Egyptian goose. The zebras are matching or going toward the group of buffaloes. All the herbivores can live together without any problem because they are not in competition of food. Herbivores has a good diversity of food here. They can get grass, they can get leaves, they can get roots, fruit, but not the carnivores. The carnivores are mostly limited by the environment. If there's nothing to hunt, then they will become cannibalist. But you know, they can eat each other. Uh, one time we came across a lioness, a female, eating her own cup and people were crying. That's very bad. But that, then we finally ta explained to the clients that the mother will always start with the most weakest baby. She knows that he cannot make it to tomorrow. So she will change him to become a meal so that she will make it and for the rest of the cup because female can have between two to six. So if he's having six cups and they dry in the middle of dry dry season, she mostly end up with two or one. And sometimes none because she will eat and eat and eat until the last one. And then she will make it to the next rain season when the migration comes back and she gets what to eat, she will conceive again. After 90 days, after 90 days, she will have cups. So that's that's the difficulty of becoming a carnivore. But for the herbivores, they have plenty to eat. They only need to make their safety to the maximum by watching around. Because anytime, I think there is a giraffe in the bushes, but it moves and now it's behind you. You will see it. So anytime something can happen, that's why you. When they get a, a good bunch of herbivores together, they get together and protect each other. Uh, other animals, if attack happens, they would run. 
But for buffaloes, if any attack happened like to a group like this, they would always get together. If they are in a small group like this, that means the number of males is very, very low. There's no lot of competition. But uh, in a big herds, the number of males are big and then they fight a lot for dominance. But in, com in terms of safety, they forget their differences and they come together and fight against the predator. And thereafter, everyone will go back to his. Because in a group of like 20 or 50 buffaloes, there are few male who has got number of female. So it's a game of chance. Every day you can lose, every day you can gain. The buffaloes, male buffaloes fight a lot. That's why they have massive homes because they use it for fighting. The female got easy horns because they doesn't fight for them. The male has to fight for them. They who is strong will add more female, number of female. Who is weak will lose. And then if he cannot fight and get more female, he will leave the group and become a bachelor. And then join the bachelor's group of up to six male. We call it rehab time, rehabilitation season. After three to four weeks, they are energetic again. They will come and fight and take over. It goes like that up and down, up and down, and that's good because of blood transmitted disease. It won't be there. Arusha National Park is formed in the slopes of Mount Meru. This, what you see, is the volcanic basin. The flat land, what we call it, a, a, a small Serengeti, is the volcanic basin. That means before the eruption, it can maybe there was a hill here or a small geography, I mean a, a volcanic. You see the piglets, the little ones. Uh -huh. Those are the babies of uh, beginning of I mean October, November. Warthog. Warthog, yes. They have the hard head. The the matured ones, yeah, you can see. Female has got two horn. Uh, I mean. Uh, he will stop, don't worry. He's just looking for a better angle. They are passing that bush. And uh, now they can come out. They are so the piglets, the baby ones, are vulnerable to, to eagles. Not only jackals and hyenas and lions and leopard cheetahs. Even the birds of prey. They can hunt the baby, the piglets, because they are small in size. Sometimes the bushes, the grass doesn't allow them to run in a full speed. And uh, if they lose the eyesight of where the mother is heading to, that's the time they can easily be taken. Because, as you know, that the warthogs will run always with the tail up. We call it antenna. That helps, that facilitate uh, visual contact between uh, adults and the young ones. When they are in full speed through the grasses, they cannot see each other, but they can see that antenna. So they will mm. follow it and run after their fellow. That's why you see the mother is running with the tail up, keeping the babies together. But the grass is too tall, then it's a big problem. Okay, as I was saying, that Arusha National Park is formed along the slopes of Mount Meru. On the other side, the northern part, there is a village where they grow a lot of tomatoes. That's why you see there's public transport driving through here. Unless otherwise, there's something like that. Normally in the park, you don't get public transport roaming around as it is here. Here 